talk to you uh, tonight, uh, God gave an invitation. Actually, it's two invitations. But first I wanted to talk, just give a little overview of God. You know, Tim, I love his song tonight because he was talking about God. And that's what I'm going to give a little overview of God. First, starting out that God is a creator. In Genesis 1.1, the Word of God says, in the beginning of creation, God had no beginning. He always was, He always is, and He always shall be God. He created the heaven and the earth and the entire cosmos or the universe. In verse 2, it says that the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. It became that way after the rebellion of Lucifer against God. God's Holy Spirit moved on the water and God began to create or recreate. And the Lord said, let there be light. And there was light. Uh, my next topic, God is King of Kings and Lords of Lords. There, the word of God says there are four living creatures in heaven that do not rest day and night that they are saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. When they give glory and honor and thanks to God who sits on the throne, who lives forever, the, four, the 24 elders fall down before God who sits on the throne and worships him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they are they exist and were created revelations 4 8 3 11. god is worthy of our glory in psalms 95 6 it says oh come let us worship and bow down let us kneel before the lord our god our maker for he is god and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. In Psalms 90 verses 1 and 2 it says, Lord you have been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth and ever the earth was formed from everlasting to everlasting you are God. God is his word in John 1 1 in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made. In verse 4, it tells us that in him was life, and the life was the light of men. In 1 John 5, 11, and this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this is in his son. And this is a testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this in his son. Let that sink in, in, in a minute. The creator of the universe, the deity, gave us his son. Praise God. Father God, we thank you for that tonight. Thank you, Father, for in him was life, and the life was the light of men. In Psalms 107, 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. And Jeremiah 1, 12 says that he watches over his word to perform it. And Isaiah 55, 11 says that, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper where I send it. In Matthew 24, 35, God gives us a guarantee. He says that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. God is love. God loves us because of who he is. He first loved us. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. 
And the second commandment is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 37 through 40. God's word commands that we love. 1 John 4, 8. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. If you love me, you will keep my word, and my Father will love you, and we will come to you and make our home with you. That's John 14, 23. God's love demonstrated. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God sent his only begotten son <clears throat> into the world that we might live through him. This is the first invitation, and that is the invitation to the laws. Jesus came to earth with a mission to redeem us back to our heavenly father. By his death on the cross, his blood paid the price for our sins. Thereby, he gave an invitation to the whole world to accept Jesus Christ as Savior. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost, Luke 19.10. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. For God so loved the world. That word so baffles me a lot. It's because he couldn't think of another word. He loved the world. He loved us so much that he, he didn't, it didn't say God loved the world, but he so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. All of us know that at John 3.16. Romans 10, 9 says, if we confess with our mouth Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, then we will be saved. Another uh, salvation scripture, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, Ephesians 2, 8. Romans 10, 13 says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. My second invitation is an invitation to the church. This, ex this invitation is extended to the people of God. The great awakening is here and revival has started and we are not ready of Joel 2, 1, and then the second uh, verse is Joel 2, 12. Here, here we have prophet Joel talking. Workers are needed, but they're very few. And Joel has the answer. He tells us we need to blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is at hand. Therefore, he says, turn to me with all your heart and fasting. Um, why did Joel say, turn to me with all your heart? Let's look at the heart. Why did he say the heart? Because the word of God says, from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulterous fornication, murders, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. Okay, um, these are the things that defile a man. This is what's in uh, a man's heart. Okay, we're going to look at this in, uh, again in, in another scripture. Uh, where, therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart and with fasting. Okay, fasting is old school. It's not popular with the church. It's got to be three days, 21 days, 40 days, and on and on. Uh, no, that's not what fasting is about. It's about time. Give yourself time to be alone to pray and to seek God. Use your prayer language. Seek his will for your life. Spend time with him. We don't 
fast. <laughs> It's, it's not that we go into bondage and say, well, it's a three-day fast. And so, because what normally happens on three days, 21 days or whatever, you're doing whatever you need to do. And you don't have a lot of time to pray because you don't, I'll use the word, steal away and do it. But fasting is taking some time out to be with God. I was praying. <laughs> I was driving. My car is, is, is my uh I'm always in my car, so my car is my uh, altar, pretty much. <laughs> but I was talking to him about fasting, and he said it's not about the days, the 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 21 days, whatever. But it's getting with me, getting my heart, finding my will. What do I want done? What do I want you to do? What it's all about him. And we're servants of him, so we need to seek his will for our life and spend time. Well, that's an hour. An hour is good. You can fast for one hour. <laughs> you know, just get away with him. Um, we're going to go back to Joel 2.12 again. He says, uh, let, me just, let me just read it. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting and weeping and mourning. So when you're in a mode and you are really being touched by God and you're fast, um, excuse me, you're weeping and you're mourning. And he says, rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of good kindness and repenteth him of the evil. So, uh, Ren means to tear into pieces and show God how sorry you are for your actions if, if you have done some things that's not been pleasing to him. Uh, 1 Peter 4, 17 says that judgment must begin in the house of God. That means we must judge ourselves so God won't have to judge us. Um, if you could bring up 2 Chronicles 7.14. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We praise you today. 2 Chronicles 7.14. We know the scripture. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Okay, let's look at the word humble. In 1 Peter uh, 1, uh, 8, I believe it's 1 8 says if we humble ourselves be under the mighty hand of God that he will exalt us for the basics is just to lower yourself or you know just God here I am I'm lost I'm undone I need some help uh, we humble ourselves and come before him with that type of attitude not that we know everything or we know, you know, what we need to do. But we come before him, humbling ourselves. And we, we may start out by, Lord, create me a clean heart. Give me a right spirit. I need you, Lord, and cry out to him. And he said he would exalt. Okay, we're going to go back to prayer. It says prayer. Let's look at seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. Now, remember, he's talking to people that are called by his name he's not talking to sinners seek his face and turn from our wicked ways we need to seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness and what his righteousness and all these other things will be added to us Matthew 6 38 we are a righteous we are to be a righteous holy people and 1 John 1, 9 is written to Christians. And he says if we confess our faults, our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to clean us up from all unrighteousness. 
So somebody said, hmm, that's about Christians. Do Christians really sin? You know? And uh, the answer is yes. We have convenience lies. We lie because we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Or we'll tell somebody, oh, they did a good job when we know they didn't because we didn't want to hurt their feelings. And then we'll go and, and we'll say, God, forgive me for lying. But it, lying is, you know, it's serious because in Revelation 21a, God tells us that all liars white lies, whatever kind of lies. All liars will have a place in, that, in, in the fire and brimstorm, which is the second death. So, yeah, we got to watch that. And then uh, unforgiveness is a big thing in the Christian community. Um, after, after Jesus teaches the disciples how to pray in the sixth chapter of Luke, in, in chapter 14, he comes back and he tells them, uh, <laughs> You know, you have to forgive. If you don't forgive, I'm not going to forgive you. And uh, that's Matthew 6, 6, 14. And, and uh, Psalm 66, 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, God won't hear my prayer. So sometimes we're wondering why we don't get our prayers. We need to check up on ourselves. And the next thing uh, we have a problem with, is anger and he, he tells the, the word tells us to be angry and don't sin and you sin when you just fester it and let it and the Bible say don't let the Sun go down and then it becomes bitterness and it just keeps going it can even go into hatred um, so you know that anger is a, a an emotion that God gave us but it's not to be used in the wrong way we have a disagreement, the Bible says go to that person and talk to them and tell them, you know, but we just don't hold it in or give them a piece of our mind <laughs> and then keep it in. You know, we have to do what the Word says, let it go. If you don't let it go, you will wish you had. Now, when we um, had the scripture up for Mark 21, it talked about the evil eye. And I know y'all have seen people who, I mean, that's actually in the Bible. Was uh, Let me go back to it. It was, it was Mark, because you might want to just read it, because I couldn't believe some of the stuff. Well, I mean, I, I knew some of it in there. But, I mean, I've seen people in church not like somebody, and they look at them when they think nobody's looking with a real mean, evil eye. I mean, you can see, you can see demons. You can see, you can tell when a spirit is not a God. You can look at a person's face and tell. But that's where the evil eye is. And the Bible says it, it, it defiles you. It's in your heart. And what's in your heart is going to come out anyway. But the uh, next thing I want to talk about is the Roman eyes. The Roman eyes of, of the men in the church where they're looking at the women and, and they're just looking, you know, I sure like that lady or maybe, you know, this or whatever. You know, they have the wrong intention, but it's coming from the heart. All of this comes out of the heart. And that's why God is talking about our hearts. We got to get our hearts ready. It doesn't mean we're not saved. It means we need some deliverance or we need some more prayer or we need to ask God to change our heart or change us, change our life, whatever the situation is. We need to take it back to the altar with God. The other thing is, uh, that's prevalent in the church is addictions. Uh, we're talking about addictions to porn and perversion on the internet, where usually it's men. I don't know too many women that's into that, but when the wives go to bed, they uh, get on the internet and just spend some time looking, you know. That is not godly, and God is against that. That's, that's not. Uh, uh, another thing that, that Christians have to deal with is affairs. You know, and a lot of time they're openly and under ministry headings, like single parents uh, meetings, parents for singles and stuff. They're, they're meetings, but afterwards they're setting up for dates and this and that and this one this time and that one next time. And, and that's not uh, 
that's not godly. They also have that going on in the seniors' ministries, too. <laughs> um, then we got the uh, homosexual lowdown, which God says is an abomination. We got the preachers and ministers in there that are openly homosexual. We got singers, pastors, you name it, in the church that's homosexual. And then we got the pastors and, and deacons that are in the lowdown, what they call a lowdown. That's, they got wives and everything, but uh, on the lowdown, they got a man. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, no, that's very prevalent. It's very prevalent in churches. It's very prevalent in black churches. And then uh, we got to clean it up. All I'm talking about is cleaning the church up. Uh, we have a convenience living. Now that's living together without being married. Okay, we got the young people, they've been doing it, but now we got the grandmas and grandpas and the great grandmas and the great grandpas. And they don't get married because they're widowed and they're getting a, a spouse's uh, pension or benefits. Are they getting the VA benefit from the husband? And I know people, and you know, you try to talk to them, but they don't listen. Uh, what would it take for you to keep this like this is and lose your soul? But this one lady told me, well, um, I get a good VA check for my, my ex-husband. So I live with so-and-so, and he gets a check from his wife's pension plus his, so it's convenient for us to do this, but that's not the word of God. I mean, we have to clean, if we don't clean up, we're gonna be just as lost, as, and how can we help? The revival is here at hand, and who's gonna do the work? We can't do, we cannot work for God. With, dirty hands. We got to have clean, clean hands. The other thing uh, I want to talk about is uh, inappropriate uh, clothing. And um, I went to a church and they had good praise and worship, you know, by the, by, by the scale of good praise and worship. But I had a, a a gentleman that was a prayer partner, and he always sat in the back doing the, the, he started sitting in the back on the back chair doing praise and worship. And then when it was time for prayer partners, we all go to the front and he go there too. And I, I was, finally I got, I said, let me ask him. I said, why do you sit on the back row? And then when it's time for prayer partners, you go to the front with us. And he said, because I want to enjoy worship. And if I sit up there in the front and I'm looking at what those people are wearing, I just can't get my mind on serving God. I can't get my mind on worship. And I understand what he was talking about because I went to a, a church for a while. I couldn't go there very long where they had praise and worship and this uh the, I guess the lead person did not wear appropriate clothing for church. And I am a lady, but it was so distracting to me. I could imagine what it was like with the men in the church. But we got to get ready. We got to get ready. We got, that's why uh, uh, God is telling us, you know, I need workers, but I need them to be right. And so uh, I know I'm talking to a lot of people that's out there on the internet, but we need to take heed and do what God, uh, he's calling us for righteousness and holiness. And he says without that, we're not going to even be able to see him. Uh, but I'm going to stop and go back to prayer where I was in uh, seven, uh, Second Chronicles 7.14. Prayer. Our churches have lost a key to the kingdom. The word of God says one can chase a thousand and two can put 10,000 to flight. And um, there is strength in unity. And I like 
like this story in Genesis 11. It's one of my favorite stories in, in the Bible, and I kind of like to look at it when, and laugh. Because when you think of people trying to build a tower, and you go out and you look at the universe, and you said they had to have some awesome plans. Uh, they had to have some awesome knowledge. I mean, I mean just think, it, it's just funny. Because you say, well, what, what was their foundation or what were they building or what were they using? But uh, they had gotten up pretty high and God had to come down and look at it. And, and you know, he said, uh, these people that I've made, they have so much unity. This is the way I'm talking, I'm talking for them. They have so much unity that if I don't do anything to confuse their language, you know, they might just get to heaven. So that's how we got the different languages in, in, the, uh, in the world. But it's unity and strength. They all had the same mind, they had the same goal, and they had the same de determination to get to heaven. Uh, but the church needs to uh, know that they need time for corporate prayer so the whosoever's can come and pray at, because the harvest is at hand. I mean, we don't know when it's going, the revival is going to come here and, 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 and wherever in Houston, uh, but we need to pray for lost souls. We are to pray that the Lord of the harvest will send souls because God needs righteous people, people of faith, and people willing to obey and answer the call for this is the now time harvest and time for revival. Matthew 9, 37 says that the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Pray for the Lord of the harvest to send laborers. We are the called out ones to work with the millennials and the Generation X and Y and Z and the whosoever's to get out the end time harvest. And we need to uh, ask the Holy Spirit to help us in areas that we need to change. And I would suggest that you get ready and RSVP to accept the invitation from God. Father, we just thank you tonight for this word Father, we ask you that it not fall on deaf ears, but Father, that we would be like Jesus was when he was 12 years old and his father and mother had left him and he, they looked for him for a whole day before they found out he was missing and they went back and it took them three days to find him. But Father, we ask that we be about your business and let the things that please you let us be about that, Father. Let your will be our will, Father. Let us seek your will. Let us seek you daily, Father God. Father God, we ask you and that you would forgive us if there are things in our lives that need to be addressed, that you would bring them to us. You would give us revelation. You would give us knowledge, Father God. You would give us dreams and visions to let us know and see what we need to change. And Father, that we would do an inventory and see the things that we're missing it. Father, you are calling for a holy and a righteous nation. And Father God, your glory is going to appear at any minute, Father, and we want to be ready. We want to be willing and ready to be able to do your will. So Father, we just ask you, Father God, for your mercy, we ask you for your kindness, Father God. We just thank you for who you are and that you chose us this hour for such a time as this. And Father, we don't count it lightly. Father, we just give you praise for everything. Father, we want everything we do, everything we say to give you glory in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just thank you and praise you for your son, Jesus. And we give you thanks tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Is there anybody here that would need prayer that say, um, I just need a hand, somebody to touch me, just to pray with me or to believe with me? Or maybe there's somebody that's lost 
and doesn't know God, somebody that would like to come and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, or maybe you haven't done a public declaration and you would like to uh, stand up and say, I want to publicly accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because the Bible says, if you are ashamed of me, then when I get in my Father's house, I'll be ashamed of you. So if there's anybody like that that would need prayer, we're going to turn this over to the pastor.